Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into one of the most fascinating sequences in math, the Fibonacci sequence. You've probably heard of it, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13 and so on, where each number is the sum of the two before it. But did you know there's a general formula that can give you any Fibonacci number without calculating all the previous ones? That's right, and today I'm going to walk you through how to find it step by step. Let's get started. Okay, so the Fibonacci sequence is defined by a simple rule. Each number is the sum of the two numbers before it. Mathematically, we write this as f of k equals f of k minus 1 plus f of k minus 2. We also know the starting points. f of 0 equals 0 and f of 1 equals 1. Our goal is to find a general formula for f of k, a way to calculate any Fibonacci number directly without adding up all the previous ones. To do this, we'll use something called a generating function. Sounds fancy, but don't worry, I'll break it down. A generating function is like a magic tool that packs the entire Fibonacci sequence into a single equation. We define it as g of x equals f0 plus f1 times x plus f2 times x squared plus f3 times x cubed, and so on. In other words, it's a sum where each term is a Fibonacci number multiplied by x raised to a power. Our goal is to find a simple expression for g of x that we can work with. Now, let's use the Fibonacci recurrence relation. f of k equals f of k minus 1 plus f of k minus 2. We'll multiply both sides by x to the power of k and sum over all k starting from 2. This gives us the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of f of k times x to the k equals the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of f of k minus 1 times x to the k plus the sum from k minus 2 times x to the k. Don't let the notation scare you. We're just rewriting the recurrence in terms of the generating function. Let's simplify each part. First, the left-hand side. The sum from k equals 2 to infinity of f of k times x to the k is just g of x minus f0 minus f1 times x. Since f0 equals 0 and f1 equals 1, this simplifies to g of x minus x. Next, the first sum on the right-hand side. The sum from k equals 2 to infinity of f of k minus 1 times x to the k. We can factor out an x and rewrite this as x times the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of f of k minus 1 times x to the k minus 1. If we let m equal k minus 1, this becomes x times the sum from m equals 1 to infinity of f of m times x to the m. But the sum from m equals 1 to infinity of f of m's x to the m is just g of x minus f0, which is g of x. So this simplifies to x times g of x. Similarly, the second sum on the right-hand side, the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of f of k minus 2 times x to the k. We can factor out x squared and rewrite this as x squared times the sum from k equals 2 to infinity of f of k minus 2 times x to the k minus 2. If we let m equal k minus 2, this becomes x squared times the sum from m equals 0 to infinity of f of m times x to the m. But the sum from m equals 0 to infinity of f of m times x to the m is exactly g of x. So this simplifies to x squared times g of x. Putting it all together, we have g of x minus x equals x times g of x plus x squared times g of x. Now let's solve for g of x. Rearranging the equation, we get g of x minus x times g of x minus x squared times g of x equals x. Factor out g of x, g of x times the quantity 1 minus x minus x squared equals x. Now divide both sides by 1 minus x minus x squared. g of x equals x divided by 1 minus x minus x squared. And function for the Fibonacci sequence. Now to find a general formula for f of k, we'll use a technique called partial fraction decomposition. This involves breaking down the generating function into simpler parts. First, let's factor the denominator. 1 minus x minus x squared. This is a quadratic equation, and its roots are x equals 1 plus the square root of 5, all divided by 2, and x equals 1 minus the square root of 5, all divided by 2. Let's call these roots alpha and beta, respectively. So, alpha equals 1 plus the square root of 5, all divided by 2, and beta equals 1 minus the square root of 5, all divided by 2. Now that we have the generating function, g of x equals negative x divided by the quantity x minus alpha times x minus beta, we'll use partial fractions to break it into simpler terms. We write g of x equals a divided by x minus alpha plus b divided by x minus beta, where a and b are constants we need to find. To solve for a and b, 
we'll multiply both sides by x minus alpha times x minus beta. This gives us negative x equals a times the quantity x minus beta plus b times the quantity x minus alpha. Now we'll solve for a and b by plugging in specific values for x. First, let's set x equal to alpha. This simplifies the equation to negative alpha equals a times the quantity alpha minus beta plus b times the quantity alpha minus alpha. Since alpha minus alpha equals zero, the second term disappears and we're left with negative alpha equals a times the quantity alpha minus beta. Solving for a, we get a equals negative alpha divided by the quantity alpha minus beta. Next, let's set x equal to beta. This simplifies the equation to negative beta equals a times the quantity beta minus beta plus b times the quantity beta minus alpha. Since beta minus beta equals zero, the first term disappears and we're left with negative beta equals b times the quantity beta minus alpha. Solving for b, we get b equals negative beta divided by the quantity beta minus alpha. But notice that beta minus alpha is the negative of alpha minus beta. So we can rewrite this as b equals beta divided by the quantity alpha minus beta. Now we have expressions for a and b. Let's substitute them back into the partial fraction decomposition. Substituting a and b, we get g of x equals negative alpha divided by the quantity alpha minus beta, all divided by x minus alpha plus beta divided by the quantity alpha minus beta, all divided by x minus two. G of x equals one divided by the quantity alpha minus beta times the quantity negative alpha divided by x minus alpha plus beta divided by x minus beta. Now let's rewrite the fractions as geometric series. Recall that one divided by x minus alpha equals negative one divided by alpha times one divided by one minus x divided by alpha. This is the sum of a geometric series. Negative one divided by alpha times the sum from k equals zero to infinity of x divided by alpha, all raised to the power of k. Similarly, one divided by x minus beta equals negative one divided by beta times the sum from k equals zero to infinity of x divided by beta, all raised to the power of k. Substituting these into g of x, we get g of x equals one divided by the quantity alpha minus beta times the quantity alpha divided by alpha times the sum from k equals zero to infinity of x divided by alpha, all raised to the power of k minus beta divided by beta times the sum from k equals zero to infinity of x divided by beta, all raised to the power of k. Simplifying, we find g of x equals one divided by the quantity alpha minus beta times the sum from k equals zero to infinity of x to the k divided by alpha to the k minus x to the k divided by beta to the k. Now let's extract the coefficient of x to the k on both sides. On the left-hand side, the coefficient of x to the k is f of k. On the right-hand side, it's one divided by the quantity alpha minus beta times the quantity one divided by alpha to the k minus one divided by beta to the k. So we have f of k equals one divided by the quantity alpha minus beta times the quantity one divided by alpha to the k minus one divided by beta to the k. To make this even cleaner, let's define phi equals one plus the square root of five, all divided by two, and psi equals one minus the square root of five, all divided by two. These are just the values of alpha and beta we found back. We get f of k equals one divided by the square root of five times the quantity phi to the power of k minus psi to the power of k. And there you have it, the general formula for the Fibonacci sequence. Pretty cool, right? Math is full of these beautiful connections and the Fibonacci sequence is just one example. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss a math adventure. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.